Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for trading session Friday, the 11th of August 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal. Signals and market updates from leading providers at www.itradesignal.com. Uh, you can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so let's bring the stats to you in terms of the markets thus far this morning. Asian markets certainly clobbered. Japan away on holiday, and that's a good thing, I think, given the, uh, the actual on uh, mass selling that's certainly uh, gone on. Uh, the Hang Seng down a whopping 2%, Shanghai down 1.6%, so Asian markets certainly being clobbered on the back of, obviously, US markets under pressure as well. Okay, so it certainly seems like uh, North Korean concerns certainly won't go away. Um, the rhetoric certainly is increasing, but from my perspective now, I think we certainly have baked in the uh, the actual bearish news. Now, given the fact that uh, the North Korean concerns have been there since the start of the year, the markets have totally ignored them, and all of a sudden now they decide to price them in, which really is frustrating because as a trader, you're, you're constantly going short on the back of North Korea, North Korea, North Korea, and then the market is constantly floating higher on light volume and totally ignoring it, and all of a sudden... It just decides for one day that it just wants to adhere to fundamentals or realign itself with fundamentals and no longer be divorced from fundamentals. And then the market gets whacked in a day. What's the point of floating the market higher constantly, 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 and then allowing it to be smacked one day? I don't understand the logic in that. It's best if you give yourself, I mean, from a market making perspective, even from a, a healthy market perspective, if you allow the market con to contract at least half a percent or a quarter of a percent or even one tenth of a percent. OK, but don't allow the market to constantly rip higher, rip higher, rip higher, rip higher, knock out stops, knock out stops, knock out stops. And then you allow it to reverse within one day and knock out 40 handles or 50 handles on the S&P 500. It's just totally illogical to me. Why would you do that? I don't understand from a market making perspective, from a trading perspective. It certainly isn't healthy. Now, just look at the S&P 500. I mean, let me just look at the S&P 500 here. Look at the daily chart. Look how stupid that is. I mean, it's just pathetic. The market starts ripping higher here from um, July. 2017 start of july okay so 6th of july here okay we're starting to rip higher rip higher rip 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 yes we had one little retracement here candle not sure i can't remember what that was uh, and then all of a sudden the market certainly starts to move higher 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 and bang okay look at that i mean it's just and now it looks like we're looking to go to a gap at 24 25 why do you allow the market to constantly rip higher from here i mean the dow's even worse this is actually a conservative chart uh, it's not too bad on the actual S&P 500. It's actually been pretty obedient to fundamentals in the fact that it hasn't just ripped higher constantly. If you look at the Dow Jones, I mean, Dow Jones really is probably your best example. Take a look at that. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Constant rip higher. I mean, talking July here or May 2017, we were around the 2600 and then we ended up at 2200. I mean, how do you explain this rally? It just, uh, it just baffles you. And then it distorts fundamentals and then it becomes very hard to read. Now, from my tra own trading perspective, 2017 certainly has been very poor from my own standards in terms of reading the market. Uh, and again, I was off on a trip with the family in Wales yesterday and then uh, I look at my phone and lo and behold, the market's down quite substantially. So again, uh, the FTSE 100 as well. I mean, I'm going to go into that in a second. Let's just go over the, uh, the actual fundamentals first and foremost. OK, let's look at the fundamentals first of all overnight. Uh, yeah, in terms of you, nothing really overnight. We have uh, Mr. Governor, RBA, uh, Mr. Lowe talking down the Aussie. I think that's probably the only thing. And also, obviously, North Korean concerns. Uh, CPI data this morning from Germany, more or less in line. Okay, no real surprises there. Also from Sp France, in line. Spain, uh, CPI data more or less in line. So nothing to be scared of. Uh, non farm payrolls do actually slightly increase here. So again, certainly is a good sign, quarter on quarter, obviously is healthy for the French uh, equity market. Uh, Hong Kong the GDP actually rose, that was a good sign, okay, so actually rose quarter on quarter 1%, so certainly a positive sign. Also with regards to uh, the oil data as well, oil, oil certainly looking to uh, stabilise, certainly looking to move lower. Also with regards to the, uh, the Trump administration, it certainly seemed to be doing a U-turn now certainly have reversed and are now looking towards a political potential solution as opposed to diplomacy, exercise of diplomacy, as opposed to uh, stupid empty rhetoric, okay, and fiery rhetoric at that as well. And that's the reason why the market has been spooked and uh, you've certainly moved lower, which, again, to be honest, shouldn't really be spooked now. But there have been certainly a saber rattling since January. So, again, that certainly is a status quo. Okay, so that's where we stand. Now, let's look at the market, technically speaking, the German DAX. Let's look at the German DAX here, folks. Okay, looking at the daily chart, first and foremost. 
Okay, daily chart certainly bouncing off that pivot at 11,940, 11,946. You have 200 MA at 11,915. So again, that certainly is your cause for uh, certainly a uh, entry point. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Just bear with me. Okay, so that's your entry point there, folks. Okay, in terms of the uh, in terms of the actual uh, market that's set itself, okay, so that's where we stand, folks. Okay, on the uh, the German DAX daily chart, certainly bouncing off uh, off potential support. Uh, going over to the sixty minute chart now, the German DAX again, looking certainly to bounce, and you have a gap fill at twelve zero one five, looking to potentially close that twelve one hundred. You're looking at potentially testing that key uh, resistance there. Let's move on to the ten minute chart, the German DAX. We've broken out this downward sloping key. Uh, bearish channel looking above, like I said, looking to close that gap at 12,000. Then you have uh, resistance at 12,050, and then you have resistance at 12,100. So keep an eye on those zones. That's what I will be saying for now. Okay, so those, those are the zones that I'll certainly be keeping an eye on in terms of the next potential market move. Okay, so German DAC, from my perspective, certainly looking bullish, looking to potentially break higher. In terms of the French CAC, let's look at the French CAC again. Stabilizing on the 10 minute chart, daily chart, again, you're into gap fill support, so therefore you're looking for a potential bounce. If that support goes, then the next one is further down, which is around just below sub 5,000. But certainly looking for the gap to hold here, like I said, looking for a potential bounce. Okay, if we continue to fall further, then you are looking at 5,000. But for now, my understanding and my interpretation of the market at present really is that we're looking for a uh, potential bounce, okay? on the French CAC. Let's go to the 60 minute chart, give you a more of an insight. Okay, 60 minute, you certainly have gap filled. That really is the level to watch out for now. If we continue to push higher than the first level of resistance at 5090, and then you're looking at gap fill at 5115. So that's the zone that I'll be looking at. And then obviously your resistance at 5125, then your resistance at 5150, and then ultimately gap fill above where your previous support equal resistance at 5195. So those are the levels that you're playing against. Okay, so watch out for those levels above. That's what I'll uh, certainly argue in terms of for now a uh, 10 minute chart on the french cac uh, again you're potentially making a base here if we start to reverse here then again your resistance is at 5090 uh, then you have 5095 and then eventually gap fill at 5115 so watch out for that okay in terms of the FTSE 100 or should we go on to euro stocks first and foremost let's start off with a daily chart here folks and euro stocks again you're looking at horizontal support you have 200 ma below Multiple, multiple zones of support on the Euro stocks, which again, looking for a potential bounce here now. Certainly extremely, extremely oversold from my perspective anyway. Okay, again, each individual interprets the market differently, so you have to respect that. But my interpretation thus far, based on intermarket analysis, certainly looking for a potential pop on the Euro stocks, looking to move higher. Your first level of resistance was 3435. Previous support equals resistance on the daily chart. 60 minute chart on the Euro stocks again. Uh, key uh, so horizontal support lines if you were to zoom out okay not going to do that for now uh, okay i think i've explained on the daily chart why we're at potential support and again you're looking to rip higher you have a gap which certainly needs to be closed okay above um, from my perspective is market extremely extremely oversold okay on almost every metric from my perspective uh, and again looking to especially europe anyway uh, europe really is immune to a lot of the uh, potential saber rattling uh, between the americans and the chinese if anything it's not really going to affect their economies. It's just uh, more of a intermarket analysis move lower, i.e. US markets down, European markets certainly bearing the brunt of it. Okay, but for now, looking for gap fill, that will be a target above, which is 3435. Let's see if we can potentially close that above, okay? So certainly looking for some buying power here. Again, given the fact that Euro is below 1.18, certainly that will be uh, a potential catalyst as well. So keep an eye on that. Okay, so that's basically the status quo. Of the market at present so again look for 3425 and 3435 in terms of gap fill okay uh, so certainly looking for a pop higher here in terms of the uh, the actual uh, FTSE 100 let's move on to the FTSE now FTSE certainly clobbered on the back of BOE Saunders as well certainly talking up a potential rate hike so again that certainly is risk and negative uh, looking for the um, the actual um, FTSE 100 here you have support around the 7300 Again, looking for support of 7260 as well, given the BOE Saunders, certainly hawkish. Certainly will keep the FTSE 100 subdued from my perspective and my understanding anyway. Okay, so looking for a potential bounce. Let's see how the market unfolds here. Okay, 
Uh, it certainly is oversold on every metric on the FTSE itself. But again, BOE Saunders, certainly hawkish, that will certainly act as a potential drag on the FTSE 100. So bear that in mind. Okay, so that's where we stand. Any potential bounce on the FTSE certainly will be uh, facing resistance at uh, key resistance is 7360 then you have 7388 now 90 and then you have all the fibre resistance levels as well to watch out for in terms of the 10 minute chart on the FTSE 100 it certainly seems that we've dipped below down to 7297 and from my perspective especially given the fact that Mr BOE Saunders is hawkish that certainly will not help the FTSE at all the unfilled gap above is at 7390 it's going to be tough to close that folks okay again 7380 and 7390 is your key resistance zone Okay, so I think that's really a good summation of European equities. It certainly seems like they've been body slammed. It's probably the best way of doing it from a WWE reference. S&P 500, as you can see here now, so into that uh, key Fib 61%. Gap filled below at 24.25. Uh, let's see if we can close that gap. On that note, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your training needs and certainly take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye now.